Hey guys, today I'm playing Who Shot Sam, a custom Minecraft map created by <laughs> these chickens, created by Felonius the Wizard and Bongo Tez. And this is also like the last map that I played for the vanilla challenge by Ars Malik. So, um, this is, as I said, Who Shot Sam. It looks like we're in a cemetery and let's go ahead and open this up. A PI notebook. We've got some rules, background, suspect list, player info. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of stuff. Okay, let's just... I hate that... I hate that it puts stuff on this side. I want things to go straight onto this side. It's annoying. Okay, PI notebook. What is this? SC Sloth Malone. Okay. Books, suspect cards. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna have to read all of this figure out how to play this because it's like a murder mystery so here we go rules play on peaceful it's already on peaceful i checked it's a single player map yep i'm playing single player no secret pig in this map okay please don't place or break blocks unless told so green carpets are suspicious remove them okay most items and item frames can be used especially books torches and papers weapons can't there's no secret society in otisburg you may do the two side quests, library books and player's records. Seek and deliver. And if you don't like rules, don't bother with them, then... Okay. <laughs> so green carpets. Okay, don't place blocks. Don't break blocks. Unless told. Green carpet can be removed. Um, items and item frames can be used, except for weapons. Alright, let's see if I can remember all that. Suspect list. Okay, suspect list. Sloth Malone, victim's son. Emmett Brown. Emmett Brown, really? Uh, victim's half-brother. Nurse Ratchet, okay. Uh, Malone, oh, Nurse Ratchet Malone, victim's sister. Elvira Malone, victim's ex-wife. Sashana Dry Dreyfus, uh, victim's mistress. Uh, Cavendish, victim's butler. Annie Wilkes, victim's cook. Eddie Felson, victim's ex-partner. Big John Cannon, victim's tenant on, tenant on victim's farm. South Pork. Okay, the farm is called South Fork. Um, and then number 10 is the player, victim's niece. Neith. Wow, niece slash nephew. Okay, so that's our suspect list. Okay, it was a dark and stormy night. It was also Sam Malone's 69th birthday. He had gathered them all in his big mansion, which was a bit outside of the small town of Otisburg. Sam's son, Sloth, was reluctantly attending as he wasn't keen to show his ugly face to the world. The rest were all so used to him however that they didn't care sloth was the son of sam's first marriage so sam's second ex-wife elvira hadn't poured any of her genes into that mix elvira elvira was as beautiful as sloth was ugly or as sam's sister ratchet or as sam's sister ratchet was gray and dull sam's lover or friend as he called her soshana dreyfus was also beautiful but more of the natural variety she didn't feel at home at in the party. Sam's half-brother, Emmett Brown, was, as usual, not brought up to be in furnished rooms. Instead, he was always on his feet, touched things and people. The brothers were of the same age, but Emmett had more wild energy left, and his eyes shone with joy. Equally as old as Sam was Eddie Felson, Sam's former partner. Why he had been invited this time, he didn't know only that it was something about a new will. They were enemies since long ago, so Eddie also felt uneasy. He sat next to Big John Cannon, who was a tenant of Sam's farm, South Pork. The tenant never looked at his host. Instead, he devoted all his attention to the soup, brought by either the butler, Cavendish, or the cook, Annie Wilkes. Another relative was in attendance. It was the child of Sam's dead sister. That person was you. This was almost five years ago. Later, that night, two shots were heard, and Sam alone was dead. For five years, you have been living with the accusation that it was you who fired those shots. For reasons no one can understand, Sam Malone had written a five-year document stating that no trial should take place within five years if he was killed in a violent manner. During this period, you've become a detective in order to clear your own name. You now have 30 days to do just that. Luckily, Sam's lawyer, Mr. Finch, has provided you with a suspect list to start with. You will find more among the police records from five years ago. Perhaps Dr. Van Helsing can give more information. And you know that Cook Wilkes t lives in town. Oh, and then there's the newspaper. Oh my gosh. Okay, so what have the what has the player been up to the last five years? 
Um, you were accused to be the shooter by everybody. However, the five-year document that lawyer Finch knew of stipulated that if Malone was the victim of an obvious murder, nothing was to be done about it until five years had expired. That meant that you had to be released and set free, but the town didn't want you around, so they chased you out of town. You moved to the West Coast and learned to be a private detective. You're hoping to prove your innocence, your innocence with this knowledge, and you have been... You've just moved to Otisburg, set up office, and it seems as if the town is willing to give you a chance. All right. Um, you have a month to find another murderer. Otherwise, otherwise, it will be you who will stand trial for Sam Malone's death. Five-year document. I, Sam Malone, being at, being at a healthy state of mind, am drawing up a legal document that will get lawful status if I die in a malicious way. My reason for this is that I suspect foul play in connection with some interactions in the future. If my death is natural or because of a sickness or a disease, this document is of no use. The autopsies mentioned later on should still be performed. If, however, my death is caused by an accident or malicious violence, this five-year document is put to lawful use. My lawyer, Atticus Finch, shall make sure the following points are done properly. 1. The local sheriff, Culpepper, will conduct a normal investigation. If that investigation turns up enough evidence to accuse anybody of a crime, no court hearing should be done within five years. It is my belief that new evidence will appear. If not, then the sheriff shall take his evidence to court and the suspect should have his trial. Any autopsy made shall be followed by a second one done by Mr. Dr. Rumack, currently situated in Hollywood. This second autopsy must be made as soon as possible. It is my belief that this autopsy will give new evidence. When five years has passed, the local sheriff Culpepper will examine all evidence from past and present and decide which actions to take. Okay, that's a lot of stuff. Whew, all right. Um, so let's put that back. I'll, I'll keep the suspect list. Um, I think I can keep all the other stuff in there. Now, there's a how to solve suspect's cards, OOC books. There's one, and then Sloth Malone. Okay, so how to solve. How to solve this. As with any criminal investigation, one must search for motive, means, weapons, and location. Through alibis, some suspects can be eliminated. Some strong motives may be weakened over time. Some weak motives may be strengthened. The location may give some clues. No suspect will lie to you, but a guilty suspect will not tell the whole truth. When you enter the court, you must be able to answer who, how, where, and why. Yes, you may guess. And then there's always the detective's instinct and a butler. Suspect cards, SC. Okay, that's what that is are renamed papers that you get during your investigation. You can either They can either be used to solve problems, used to open doors by placing it in a hopper, give a hint on who is vis to visit next, or they may provide the final selection of suspects. When you enter the court, the names of the SC you carry are still the suspected culprits. Who did it? One of them, or even all of them. Okay, OOC books. These contain helpful hints or must have directions for you, the player, the numbers of each book is for the map maker's reference only. Once you've read the book and understood the directions, you can put it back. Okay, so. I'll keep the how to solve thing, too. But, okay, I think I can get that. Now, we have a suspect card for Sloth Malone. And we have our OOC book number one. Get acquainted with Otisburg. Start with the police records at the police station. Stroll by your detective agency, where you always can store whatever you don't want to carry. Talk to Annie Wilkes, who lives next door to the fire hall. Then check with Dr. Van Helsing on the other side of the Otisburg Devils Hockey Arena. Lastly, go to the newspaper office next door to the dock and check with Chief Editor Hilde Johnson. Okay. So, police records at the police station. All right. And then this is my notebook. Use this notebook to keep notes on the case. All right. Done. Okay, so what do we have? Here lies Polonius. Big men hated him. Okay, let's get out of the cemetery. And we're in peaceful, so hopefully I don't have to worry too much about weird stuff going on. What is this? Lost doggy! Oh no! With the sad face! Lost doggy with the sad face. Okay, let's see. What does this say? Police station. That's where I need to go. Awesome. Okay. Quick stop groceries. I assure you, we're open. Okay. Parsons Drugs. Alright. So, where's the police station? Which one is the police station? Wait, what is this? Oh. The Ottisburg 
Otisburg Bugle. Where is Sloth Malone? Hubcap mystery still unsolved. Okay, is this the police station? Okay, awesome. Police meeting room. I need to get to the to the records, I guess, right? Police records. What's going on here, though, first? I don't know, but it feels like I've seen this Rob somewhere. The guy in the cell? Yeah, he looks familiar somehow. <laughs> okay. So I'm guessing there's somebody in there? Okay, I see him. Just Oh, there he is right there. Greetings. <laughs> okay, that sounds familiar. Okay, police records. Here we go. APB's recent filed reports. Uh, coffee beans. Witness testimony to Sam Malone's murder. Fireworks. Okay. So we've got filed reports and these. So, wow. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of stuff. Okay. And we have an SC. Um, and then here, lots, really, <laughs> that's a nice report name. Uh, okay, hmm, I wonder what these are for. I just want to look at it real quick. Uh, residents reported a black hole in the neighborhood. One resident reported it stole his hamburger. He wanted to know if the police would replace it since it was stolen. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Okay, um, I kind of want to read all of these now just to see what they are. Uh, a mysterious man was seen stealing pants from someone's chests and armor stands. He was later seen giving them to a wizard. Reports indicate that the pants that the pants thief's first name may be Rob. Details are sketchy. So is that the pants thief in there? Uh, residents of a fourth floor apartment reported a man staring out the window of the adjacent building. He was constantly looking into their apartment. Upon investigation, it was discovered that the man was a cardboard cutout of Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Why do I have the feeling that's like a real police report? Police report. Some residents reported hippies in the area. Police responded with force to get rid of them all. To get rid of them, all that's left now is flowers and patchouli oil. Okay. Residents reported a dog attacking a duck down by the river. The dog was fine and went home with his owner. The duck refused medical treatment and wandered off. These are pretty funny. Officers responded to a report of a home break-in. When they arrived, the woman claimed someone broke into her house and replaced every item with exact replicas. No sign of a break-in was reported. Oh my gosh. Okay, and Mrs. Robinson reported her car was stolen. Upon investigation, it was discovered on her lot. She claimed she didn't know it was hers because it had snow on it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now I want to read all of these. Okay, here we go. APB. December 18th, 2015, the U.S. Marshals North Texas Fugitive Task Force is currently searching for fugitive Ethan Couch, who is wanted for probation violation out of Tarrant County. Okay. Uh, January 10th, 2016, the U.S. Marshals North Dakota Fugitive Task Force is currently searching for Atticus... Oh, no! Atticus Finch, who has vanished from Otisburg County. The police would want any info on Finch's whereabouts, but that's... That's my lawyer. Okay, uh, the Otisburg police force is currently searching for an unknown middle-aged hubcap thief last seen around the forests of North Dakota Southern state line. Hmm, okay. Coffee beans? Oh, and they actually are just coffee beans. And cocaine? Really? <laughs> oh my god. Fireworks? Okay. More cocaine? Interesting. Okay, and all right, witness testimonies. This is a lot of stuff. Let's go ahead and take that. And I have an egg. All right. This is so much stuff. Paper article. Okay. Cold peppers. Um, my gosh, that's a lot. Okay, so that's all 10 suspects. Okay. Shooting Sam Motives by Hildy Johnson. In our ongoing series of investigation of the murder of Sam Malone last week, a fine citizen of our community, we have found little of what may be motives. Yes, we know that Baker Bell <laughs> is the child of Ilsa Malone, married Lund. She was the sister of Malone, and it's common knowledge that Baker Bell is accusing the uncle of being the sole reason for her untimely death in a car accident some years ago. Oh, dang, what? Most arguments seem to point out Baker Bell as the killer, and for some other reason, Sam Malone has saved Baker Bell from court for the time being, at least. 
But do the other suspects have their own dark reasons to help alone to the next life? The sun sloth is to inherit everything, and he might have grew... Might have grew? Shouldn't it be my... Yeah, that might have grown tired of waiting. I'll say that. There we go. He's also very friendly with his aunt, Nurse Ratched, who may have another idea on how the Malone fortune should be distributed. The half-brother Emmett already has a trust fund in Sam Malone's name, but there was talk of a new will, and that may change everything with the legacy. Outside of the family, then, Miss Elvira might be jealous of the new girl in the neighborhood, Miss Shoshana, but that motive is growing weaker by every tea party the ladies attend together, laughing a lot. Miss O'Shana did have her little fling with Eddie Felson, which may or may not have caused problem between Malone and her. But still using a gun? Call me a silly old romantic, but this editor can't buy that. However, we know nothing about how big John Cannon is doing with the Malone Farm South Pork. Perhaps bankruptcy is just around the corner. And what if it was the butler anyway? Malone's kitchen budget might have been overdrawn by either the cook or the butler. There's also talk about some grudge against a non-raise for Mr. Cavendish that Miss Wilkes did get. No, overall, it seems to be Baker Bell who has the strongest motive. Revenge might not suit a scaredy-cat brat, but you shouldn't judge a book by the cover. Well, thanks a lot, lady in the newspaper. Jeez. Okay. Um, so, Culpepper's. The victim lay in the bed as if he was asleep. I suspect he was when the bullet hit him close to the heart. Uh, there wasn't much blood on the nightshirt. My guess is that the medicine slowed it down, making it coagulate quickly. An empty water glass and some pill boxes were on the nightstand. I found a band-aid, a band-aid, I found a band-aid on the left side of the bed. The window was open, but no markings were found on the windowsill, nor on the floor. The floor was dry. It hadn't rained inside. The butler confirms that the victim never slept with the window open. Still, it looks as if the window was open to fool me. We found no other fingerprints, but the ones from the victim. The butler, Miss Ratched, and Miss Shoshana. Shoshana. The latter two were only at the door. The gun was unmarked, and it may prove hard to get its origin. Okay. So, hold on. We found no other fingerprints but the ones from the victim, the butler, Miss Ratched, and Miss Shoshana. The latter two, those two, were only at the door. Okay, the gun was unmarked, and it may prove hard to get its origin. Hmm. Okay. <sighs> All right. Start looking at some of these. Um, I'll come to these later. Okay, let's just start with these. So, we have Annie Wilkes. I was preparing the dinner all afternoon, eager to make it as tasty as Master Sam always wanted it. But my mind was more on my sick mother. Luckily, Master Sam had given permission to leave early. He didn't have to do that, especially after giving me that raisin all. Food was made of ingredients I'd picked myself in the store. The mushroom sauce was more or less a plain brown, I don't know what that word is, with some fresh fungus. I have no idea who could have shot Master Sam, but it is a bit strange that Baker Bell is at the table all of a sudden. Last we saw, that person was the backside barging out of the door in anger some years ago. Cavendish. I had the questionable honor of taking care of the dinner guest that evening, since the cook had to take care of her sick mother. Besides Mr. Emmett's usual problem with keeping in his seat, the dinner went very well. It's not like it's rocket science, so why some so why some get a raise and some don't, well, that's a question. Mr. Sam became ill and I helped him to bed. Well, yes, Mr. Sloth helped as well. Mr. Sam took his stomach painkillers and a sleeping pill and asked me to make sure that everybody stayed in the mansion for the night. The guests had retired to the library and I took care of some of the dishes before I started to serve coffee and drinks. Miss Ratched came by the kitchen to ask for her room, I remember. Mr. Sloth asked the same thing later on, which I found a bit odd. They always have had the same rooms. Mr. Cannon did get a bit wild later, but me and Mr. Eddie made him calm down. All seemed to take that as a signal for bed, so I just removed cups and glasses to the kitchen, made a security check downstairs, making sure all doors and windows were locked, and went home, locking the kitchen door from the outside. I got home five minutes past ten and went to bed immediately. Okay. Oops. So, oh, let's, um, oops, I forgot I was on this one. I didn't want to be there at all. Me and Sam hadn't been on speaking terms for some time. Yeah, yeah, that night, not much to talk about. Me and that farmer John was talking most of the night. He's more like my kind of guy. Did I notice anything strange? Not really. The only thing I can think of was Emmett's comment on the plumbing needing an upgrade. 
I think he said. Well, that's my line of work, but replacing all the plumbing in that big mansion will take forever, and it didn't sound that bad. Who shot Sam? Well, I'm glad it wasn't me, but I put some dollars on that Baker Bell. Couldn't even get the door open, sissy. Wow, okay. Elvira Malone. What an evening. Lots of surprises, I must say. But that Emmett isn't one of them. Of course, he had to move about, disturbing everyone except Sam. And so Sam's food ended up on the floor. You should have seen the strain on Cavendish's forehead. Me and, Me and Shoshana laughed at it later, in the living room. Nobody likes Cavendish. The food was good, but Sam got his pain in the stomach again, so the rest of us sat for a while in the living room, or the library, as Cavendish calls it. Oh no, that's right, Shoshana wanted to say goodnight to Sam. When she got back, she was a bit worried or something. She had met Nurse Ratchet on the way, who followed her, or did she prevent her? So I invited Shoshana to my room afterwards. I don't know if I should say this, but it seems as if Shoshana have, has had an affair with Eddie for some time and wanted to end her strange, her strange friendship with Sam in the morning. Well, all's well that ends well. Shoshana got right... Oh my gosh. Shoshana got back to her room just before one o'clock in the night. I think I heard a door open some fifteen minutes later, but I'm not sure. And then I heard the shots. Two of them. Before I could get my gown on, I heard yelling in the hallway, and I also heard Shoshana's door open, just before I reached mine, and there Baker Bell stood, seemingly worried. What was the person doing up? What was the person doing up is my question. I wouldn't trust that one for a minute. Jesus! Why does everybody hate me? Okay, fine. Emmett Brown. That's not the one I wanted to hit. Well, I don't know. The food was good. I think Sam wanted to talk to the others about money, but that's something I don't have to worry about. Sam's got me a trust fund that will keep me and, and my laboratory at work for the rest of my life. Did I knock Sam's food over? I might have, but he got some new and he... I might have, but he got some new and he liked it, I think. But why ask me? It's that Baker Bell who shot Sam. We all know that. I guess as the farmer of Mr. Malone's farm, South Fork, I had to attend. It was something to do with the future of the whole estate, and Mr. Sam trusted me. But I didn't fit in, and all that wine stuff for dinner, I had a bit too much of that. Me and Mr. Felson was talking about how to make money. An easy-going guy, that junkyard dealer, or plumber, or whatever he's making money of nowadays. I think he helped me to my room later that night. Otherwise, I don't know much. Baker Bell? Can't say I remember much about that one either, but that door was pretty easy to break down for me. Baker Bell didn't look that strong, though. I just put, keep putting myself in there. <laughs> I keep saying player. What am I supposed to do? Okay, so, nope. That, yeah, that was it. John Brown was the last one, so. Alright. Here we go. Nope. Come on. Get out of there. So, Nurse Ratched. I think Sam was ill, cancer or something. That's why he wanted to speak with us that evening, I think. But he wouldn't even tell me, his own sister, and I could have helped him, nursed him. That evening, yes. The dinner was very good, even if I only had a plain brown sauce. I'm a bit afraid of mushrooms, so I avoid them when I can. Sorry. That evening. Well, there wasn't much to talk about. The other two ladies was gossiping in their corner. I tried to keep Emmett in a chair in the library, but I was rather tired. It had been a lot to do at the nurse's station, with all the school kids catching colds and all that. Sorry, yes, that evening. I went up to, the, I went up to Sam just to see if I could do anything, but he was already asleep. On my way back, I met Miss Shoshana, and we took a quick look on Sam together. Miss Shoshana seemed a bit anxious, and then I went to bed and fell asleep immediately. I woke up when I heard Baker Bell yelling outside Sam's door. And there's your murderer, Sheriff. Baker Bell did it. All right, I'll read mine last. Okay, so Shoshana drive us. I suppose you know that me and Sam alone wasn't really an item. We have had some lucrative affairs together and perhaps one or two side happenings, but I had no real reason to be invited, except that Sam liked to have me around. He was such a nice guy. That night, well, I mostly spent it with Elvira. I like that woman. We're pretty much of the same origin. We went talking to 1 a.m. even. The dinner, well, Emmett was his usual busy self, ruining food for Sam, even though he went and got Sam some fresh one. That Cavendish was bothered sick. <laughs> I had a nice time. I was hoping to say goodnight to Sam, but he'd already fallen asleep, or at least that was what Miss Ratched said he'd done. I wasn't able to get up to Sam's bed, because Ratched said we, would, we shouldn't bother him, and if he had cancer, well, perhaps everything was meant to happen for a reason. Okay, wait a minute. Go back. Where was that? Okay, so, Emmett... 
made Sam or made Sam's food spill everywhere, even though he went and got Sam fresh. So he went back and got Sam fresh food. So did he poison him? Hmm. Okay, Sloth Malone. I don't know much. I ate the good food. I wasn't speaking to anyone, I think. Dad needed to go to bed, so I helped Cavendish with that, yes. Later, I checked with Cavendish, so I had got my ordinary room. I like that room. It has so... So, so funny noises in the bathroom. I don't know. I went to bed early because I was tired. Pity, I like to be in the library and read. It was hard to understand what had happened. Someone had shot Dad. I understand that much. I think it's Beggar Bell who did it. Uh, but only because Aunt Ratchet said so. So you're accusing me and you don't even know. Okay, whatever. Oh, here's mine. Here we go. I wasn't very pleased being invited, but Uncle Sam begged me to come. I didn't talk to anyone, and that cook gave me angry eyes. The dinner... Uncle Emmett couldn't sit down, as usual, but I know that he doesn't mean any harm by it. Uncle Sam doesn't mind... didn't... Oh, God. Okay. Uncle Sam doesn't... didn't mind either, and he got some new food anyway. Cousin Sloth and the butler helped Uncle Sam to his bedroom, and the rest of us went to the living room. Sloth joined us almost immediately. I think it was around 8.30 p.m., because a favorite TV show usually starts then. The TV wasn't on, and I remember I wished it to be. But Miss Elvira and Miss Shoshana asked me to let it to let it be. They discussed what Uncle Sam might want us in the morning, and Mr. Felson knew about a new will. Aunt Ratched went away after half an hour or so and came back some, I don't know, 15 minutes later. No, she had met with Miss Shoshana, that's right, and both ladies came back like half past nine. Some ten minutes later, the party broke up, and I guess we were all in bed by ten. I fell asleep almost at once, and I woke up in need of a bathroom. I had just opened my room door when I heard the shots. I couldn't use full strength because of the bladder problem. I heard them calling me a sissy because of it, but there was nothing we could have done anyway. The murderer must have been far away and must have used the fire escape ladders outside. Cancer? I doubt that. No one in our family has had cancer. <sighs> okay. So there we go. That's all of that stuff. Okay. Um, that's a lot of information. Where am I going next? Stroll by the detective agency where you can, where you always can store whatever you don't want to carry. Okay. Police chief office. Okay. 